Meeting Caitlin Kinnanen, the star of the musical The Prom, was an incredibly humbling experience. She's generous, spirited, warm, but more than that, she's really accommodated herself to being an emblem and a role model for the LGBTQ community. Maybe just start in a few sentences. If we were on Planet Zog, how would you describe yourself <laughs> and what you do? Um, I am an actor. I tell other people's stories for a living and I pretend to be other people. <laughs> Sounds weird, but I love it. Very concise. I, um, uh, for those who don't know, you're not just an actor. You are the Tony-nominated star of The Prom, yes. one of the most successful musicals on Broadway, yeah. uh, which wrapped very recently mm -hmm. after a long run. How long yeah. was the run? Uh, about nine months. Right, which is great. It's amazing. Broadway standards. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> musical standards. Yeah. Tell me a little about that role and, and the play and why it was such an extraordinary hit. Um, I played Emma Nolan. She's a 17-year-old girl who wants to take her girlfriend to the prom. The PTA of her school finds out about it and they decide to cancel the prom because they don't want a same-sex couple attending. Uh, while all of that is happening, there are these four veteran Broadway performers who are a little bit down on their luck and they decide to go to Indiana, where Emma is, and try to save the day. And shenanigans ensue and craziness happens and everybody learns something from each other and it's got a happy ending. And of all the roles, what, what has been the most challenging to date? Emma Nolan in The Prom has 100% been the most challenging and most rewarding. And why is that? Uh, many reasons. Uh, she was the first real lead I had and she's a 17 year old girl who is so is simultaneously so secure in who she is and so insecure. She mm -hmm. has a voice, but she's afraid to use it. She learns how to use it. She learns how to speak up for herself and she just takes control of her own life. And that taught me so much about myself and my own power. The moment you came to my attention was the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade because there was a viral moment yeah. when you kissed your co-star, part of a musical number from yep. the show which really touched a nerve. Mm -hmm. um, there was some outrage, mm -hmm. but much more than that was this overwhelming response of thank you for seeing something like that in this incredible symbol of American family life, mm -hmm. which is what that parade represents. Yeah. And it was like, we're now welcoming into the family mm -hmm. a same-sex couple, and more than that, a same-sex kiss. Yeah. Tell me about that and what, how that felt. It was this incredible moment that we didn't really expect. When we were at our rehearsal before the parade, our director pulled Izzy and I aside and was like, this is a big deal. This is the first same sex kiss that has ever been on the parade. And that's when it really hit us that like, oh my gosh, this is a huge deal. This is something that hasn't happened before and we get to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so to do that in front of all of those people, it just felt so magical that we were representing something that isn't necessarily re represented to middle America and to spread that normalcy to people who haven't necessarily seen it and to say, no, this is fine. This is what families can look like. This is what love looks like. Mm -hmm. It was really special. That's great. This is what love looks like. Now you, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you went through your own journey <laughs> yes. um, yeah. while performing in the prom. Yeah, because um, I actually, I wasn't out at that point. I came out, um, very late, I guess. It's an interesting process because I was cast as a 17-year-old lesbian. It's a very tricky thing because representation matters, and I was identifying at that point as a straight woman. And then just like playing this character who's so sure of herself and so confident in who she is and uses her voice for so much good, it just kind of gave me the courage to be like, no, I can talk about this and it doesn't matter. And so I kind of like owned up to the fact that it's like, I'm not 100% straight. I've been with women, I've been with men. It is what it is, and whoever I end up with, I end up with because I love them. So yeah, I'm kind of like not labeling it, but I'm also not 100% straight, and I wanted to like be honest about that because to me, honesty means so much, and representation means so much, and so I wanted all of these teenagers who are coming to see the show, I wanted them to feel represented accurately instead of like, oh, well, there's another straight girl playing a lesbian. Right. It's like, no, I'm not. Let's talk about um, your childhood because you grew up yes. uh, in Seattle. I did. Uh, you were homeschooled. Yes. How did that uh, shape your values, do you think? Uh, it 
shaped my values because it let me have the freedom to follow my dreams. Mm-hmm. I have been doing theater since I was three years old, and being homeschooled let me pursue that. I lived about an hour and a half away from all of the theaters that I worked at, and if I had gone to a regular public school, I wouldn't have been able to do theater. And there just wasn't enough time in the day to make that happen. So being homeschooled let me learn and do all the theater I wanted to do to pursue my dreams, which led me to moving to New York when I was 16 to make my Broadway debut. Like that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the freedom of being homeschooled. Now your Broadway debut was in Spring Awakening. Yes. You were 16. Yes. Um, That's terrifying. It was a disaster. (laughs) It was truly terrifying and weird and wonderful and all of the emotions and just completely overwhelming. Why was your first reaction a disaster? What what was it that... I had no idea what I was doing. I was the most naive 16-year-old ever. Like, I moved across the country with two weeks' notice. I came out here with my mom, leaving my dad and my older sister behind in Seattle. Like, my parents had a long-distance relationship for two and a half years, so I'm essentially like uprooting everything I know to be true in life, Mm -hmm. moving across the country where I don't have any friends, I don't know anyone, it's just me and my mom. I don't know, it was just a lot of change very quickly and I wasn't prepared for that. So the entire experience was just kind of like me figuring it out and doing a very bad job of figuring it out. But you got there. Yes, I got there. We're good now. It's (laughs) great. Spring Awakening, interestingly, is also a musical that is hugely progressive and yeah. it features queer kids. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine what coming onto Broadway say 10 years earlier? Do you think there's, there's been a change that has allowed much more diversity in the type of people that can succeed? Yes and no. I think um, the theater community at large is such an amazing thing because we are the most accepting people mm-hmm. ever. We're kind of a like come as you are and we'll give you a big old hug and we'll be fine. So I think in some ways yeah, it would have been completely fine for me to be the person I am now then. But at the same time, I think a lot has changed. We are telling stories that haven't been told before. We're breaking boundaries. We're breaking the glass ceiling. And that's really cool and important. And we need to continue to do that. Like, by no means have we stopped growing, but we need to keep going. And what part of, of being an actor gives you the greatest gratification? Uh, Connecting with the audience. I've been really fortunate that I've gotten to be a part of shows that really say something. You know, I've done Spring Awakening, I did Next to Normal, I've done The Prom, I have worked on Fun Home. It's all of these pieces that are bringing voices to characters that haven't had voices before. Um, And that brings a really interesting audience member to see it, and it brings people who haven't been exposed to that before to see it. And to me, telling those stories to the people who need to hear them is why I do it. You know, I want to be able to have that connection with someone and have that conversation with someone. And that to me is the most meaningful part that it's like, okay, I'm gonna connect with you over this story that you've never heard before and we're gonna have a conversation about it. I really try to use my art to further humanity and further our acceptance of one another. And I think it's really important to do art that says something. Thank you.